Hi, um, my name is William Thier. I'm talking about the COVID crisis. The subject of this video is uh, COVID in the CDC's uh, testing philosophy, which I really disagree with. Now, when I, I'm making a whole series of uh, videos on the COVID crisis, and when I started uh, about five weeks ago, we had COVID cases of 500,000. It's now up to 1.2 million. Uh, the deaths were 20,000, now it's 71,000. So it's imperative to do more testing. These are all the videos I've done. Um, you can look for them on YouTube by title, or it's better probably if you, if you scroll down 50 uh, you know, uh, elements. But it's probably better if you just copy the uh, link, and you're probably going to have to do that by hand. Those are all the videos. Okay. So the outline of, you can freeze frame those. Yeah, outline um, of this talk is more testing means more people sick with COVID are identified. And therefore test more because that's the whole thing we wanna do. We wanna identify everybody if we can with COVID and get them isolated and just kill the spread of COVID. I'm going to, I, this is what I've been doing for 13 or 14 videos so far. Uh, I'm going to try to, to, to make the point again with a more visual example with Michigan. Okay, and I'm going to go through a light amount of testing. That's the CDC sampling testing, upping it to full Abbott testing, which I'll define later, upping that, doubling that again to mass testing, and finally comprehensive testing, which would be testing the whole state in one day. Now, uh, any test you do, um, you're not going to get 100% of the COVID people. It's just not going to happen. Somebody's going to run the test wrong. Um, the machine's not going to work properly. Something's going to happen. But if you repeatedly test, you can drive the number of COVID cases down. I'm going to illustrate that. Finally, my last uh, point is going to be on the poor management of the existing Abbott test machines, which are excellent ways to get mass testing. But the CDC really doesn't believe in them. Okay, more testing means more identification of people with COVID. Okay, each person that has COVID, they could be symptomatic or asymptomatic. Uh, let's say they're asymptomatic. They could unknowingly go around and infect three more people. This is how things have gone up exponentially. And we don't know how many people each person is infecting. But obviously, the more people with COVID that we isolate, the less infection that is being spread around. In more testing means more identification of COVID people. Pretty obvious. That's what you want to do. You want to do more testing. Now, the CDC says their rate of testing in, in different areas varies between, uh, between 10 and 17% for a positive test result. Okay, so if they test 100 people, they're getting maybe 10 people that are testing positive, and some other areas, they're getting 17 uh, people that are testing positive. And my visual example, I'm going to just assume 10%, okay, just to make the point. Now, the point that I want to make here, though, is more testing is better. The CDC temp, uh, sample testing rate per day is 200,000. You just look at the data every day, and it's, it goes up 200,000 tests. If I had a 10% a positive rate, that means they are discovering 20,000 people each day that... Uh, have COVID, okay, and isolating them, okay. Now, if we use full utilization of the Abbots, and I'll explain that later, that's my last part, uh, we would be able to do 10 times as much, 2 million tests, assuming, again, 10% of them are positive, we would be able to identify and isolate 200,000 people that had COVID, 10 times as many. So it seems pretty obvious more testing is better for the country, okay. So CDC sample testing, and I'm re-emphasizing this again because the CDC doesn't seem to believe this. The CDC sample testing leads to 20,000 people being identified. Full utilization of the Abbots alone would lead to 200,000 people being identified. So which would you rather have, identifying 20,000 people or 200,000 people? Seems pretty obvious to me. 200,000 people is going to get our country healthier again in our economy back. Now, I'm going to give a visual example with the state of Michigan because 
Michigan has 10 million people, and Michigan wants to, people are demonstrating they want to get their economy back. So if you're somebody from Michigan, I hope you're looking at this video because I'm going to tell you what you can do to get your economy back in 15 days. Okay? So the Abbott test machines, and this is, I've discussed this in my previous videos, can test 100 people a day. Okay? The, using the full national CDC testing in Michigan, we could test 200,000 people a day. But using the, the 20,000 Abbots at their test rate of 100 a day would mean 2 million tests a day. Okay, so th those are the first two examples. And then I'm going to double the number of Abbots to 40,000. I can go up to testing 4 million a day. And then 100,000 Abbots, I can do comprehensive testing of Michigan, 10 million in a day. So here's a visual example of Michigan, the little blue person down at the left equals 100,000 people. And if you count the row at the top, it's four groups of five. That's 20 people up there times 100,000 is 2 million people. I've got five rows. That's 10 million people for Michigan. Now I'm going to infect 10% of the people. I don't think it's nearly that bad. The, the uh, CDC rates are because they're testing people at hospitals and stuff like that. But let's say it's 10% just for the visual Thing, the example that I can give here. So that's what the red people are. They're sort of randomly uh, spaced out throughout the, uh, the, the uh, whole picture here. And now what I'm going to do is visually use the green box to indicate the, the level of CDC testing. This is for the whole country, but I'm just going to use it for Michigan. That's a green box over at the right. I can test two of these people or 200,000 people a day. And you can see to go through the whole state of Michigan and identify everybody sick is going to take an awful long time. But if I used the uh, 20,000 Abbots to their maximum capability of 100 tests a day, then I could do what the red box shows. Okay, I could do 2 million which is one complete row. And obviously, I'm going to start picking up infected people way before the CDC testing. And in fact, for the state of Michigan, I could go through the whole state of Michigan in five days. So I'm going to now illustrate what I, that, I would call that more testing. The Abbott testing is more testing. Now I'm going to go to mass testing. Okay, and, and what, what the numbers are, who knows. You know, it's just more, more than more testing. So mass testing, I'm going to just define for this example, 40,000 Abbots, which means I could test 4 million people a day. Okay, in two and a half days, I'd be through testing all the people in Michigan. In comprehensive testing, comprehensive testing I would define as testing everybody in Michigan in a single day. You might define comprehensive testing as doing it in three days, which would be the previous example. So it just depends. Uh, but you want to test everybody in the state. That's comprehensive testing. And I could do that with 100,000 Abbots. Okay, and there's other test machines. Now, again, I want to say that Dr. Fauci, Dr. Burks, and Girard are super expert in medicine, and they've done a lot for the country with the mitigation efforts. But when it comes to mass production, which leads us to more testing, they are not expert in that area at all. They are not mass production experts, and they are not experts in our economy. They're only making the, their recommendations based on medicine. And there's more factors that go into recommendations. Now, I'm going to talk about no test is 100%. If I did a comprehensive test in Michigan and tested everybody one day, I am not going to get every single COVID infection because somebody's going to mess up the test. The machine is not going to work. The chemicals are going to be dirty. Something's going to happen. Okay, But if I continually test repeatedly, I'm going to drive the number of COVID pe people down. So let's assume, because 10% was way too high, the number of cumulative cases in Michigan as of today is just a little bit over 40,000. So I'm going to assume that another 50,000 for the illustration that I'm about to do, 50,000 are undiscovered out there. So we got 40,000 we know about. There's another 50,000 we don't know about. Now, with 40,000 Abbots, and that's what I'm going to use, I can test 4 million people a day. I can go through the entire population of Michigan in three days. Okay, And I'm going to assume that if I do that in three days with those 50,000 undiscovered people out there, that I'm only going to get 80% of them because my test is not going to be 100%. 
So that means I will identify 40,000 people out of the 50,000 that really have COVID, okay? And 10,000 will remain unfound, okay? And maybe some new cases will generate in this time period as well. But campaign two, I'll go through a population again, okay? I'm doing a second thorough testing in three days of the, the, all the population in Michigan. And I'm after those 10,000 that I didn't discover before. I will identify 88,000 of them. 2,000 will remain unfound. And you can just go through the process, 80,000 each time. If you look down at the bottom bullet, campaign one, 10,000 will remain undiscovered. Then it'll be down to 2,000, will be down to 400, will be down to 80, will be down to six. By the time you've gone through the population five times with the assumptions that I've made up above, you're down to six cases in Michigan that remain undiscovered. You can go back to work, okay? You can go back to work. So again, there's my campaigns, 10,000, 2,486, okay, and I can go back to work. What does it cost? 40,000 Abbots, they cost 4,500 each. That's 180 million bucks, okay? Compared to what? Okay, Michigan doesn't have its economy. So many, every restaurant is closed down. So many stop shops and stores are closed down. People are out of work. The Michigan yearly economy is 430 billion. Okay, 1% of that would be 4 billion. One tenth of a percent would be 400 million. We're talking about 180 million here to get your economy back. It seems like a pretty good deal. Okay, in how long would it take? With the assumptions that I made, you go through the population every three days, five times, it would be 15 days. Okay, this has been going on for six weeks, that maybe seven weeks now, that we've had this COVID crisis Okay, I'm, I'm giving you a way out in 15 days. Now, you're going to have to get the machines, and that's the subject of other videos that I've made. But once you started testing, you could do this in 15 days. Okay, my last topic is going to be on uh, poor management by the CDC of test resources. Uh, the Abbott uh, ID now test machine can test 100 people a day. I don't think that's a fact that anybody would dispute. And we have 20,000 existing Abbots. There are doctor's offices. There are, you know, who knows where they are in the United States, but we should know where they are, okay? Uh, that's 20,000 Abbots, okay? So if you just take 100 times 20,000, you get 2 million tests a day that we're capable of doing. It's just a question of organization, okay? What we are doing is only one or two tests a day per Abbott machine. Okay, let's say it's one test a day instead of 100. That's 1% utilization of a really important asset. I would call that poor testing of management. I could actually, well, I'll leave it at poor testing of man of, of poor, poor management of testing. Okay, in the whole country, we're only doing 200,000 a day. So just from Abbott's, we could do 2 million. Okay, so how can I come up with this? I'm making this statement, so I want to give you the, the uh, reference so that you can go look and verify this uh, yourself. So if you look at the Trump daily briefing on ap April 17th, 2020, okay, and you're going to have to look at the specific link that I have there, so you're going to have to copy it down and type it in painfully, okay, and you scroll to hour 4, minute 17, 11 seconds, then you will see the view graph on the screen. There's other copies of this daily briefing, but they don't have this view graph, so that's why I give you that specific link. What, what they did on that view graph is give the number of cumulative tests that the Abbott test machine has done. So if you go to column one, that's the week. The week ending April 2nd starts at the bottom, it goes to April 9th, goes to April 16th. So the number of cumulative tests as the end of April 2nd was 120,000. And then it was cumulatively went up to 380,000 April 9th and went up to 571,000. Okay, so if you want to know how many tests you're doing a week, obviously between April 2nd and April 9th, I take 120 from 380 and I get 260,000. That's the third column over there that changed from the week before. Similarly, I get 191,000. Now keep those numbers in mind. 191 and 260, I'm going to use those on the next chart. So that's how much I'm doing. 
That's how many tests I'm doing a week. Okay, so the week ending April 9th, I've done 260,000 tests that week. The, the next week I'm down for whatever reason to 191. But what I want to know is how many I'm doing a day. So that's the second column I have here, seven days a week. So I just divide seven into those numbers. I get 27,000 for the week of April 16th, 37,000 for the week of April 9th. Sounds like a lot of testing, but I've got 20,000 machines. So I'm going to divide 20,000 into 27,000, and I round that to one test a day for an Abbott. Okay, I divide 20,000 into 37,000. I'm going to round that to two tests a day. This is terrible, terrible management of an extremely valuable resource. Okay, terrible management. Imagine you're Southwest Airlines and you've got an airplane and your management wants you to use that airplane and you use it to fly once every 20 days. It would be pretty terrible management, pretty terrible utilization. Okay, now that's what we've got here with these Abbott test machines. So I'm going to emphasize this again. We got 20,000 Abbotts in the U.S. They do 100 can do 100 tests a day, potentially 2 million. We're only doing 200,000 tests a day because we are only doing one or two tests a day with each Abbott. That is terrible. Change management is what you've got to do. Okay, somebody we need a czar for Abbotts. Okay, now summarizing, more tests. It should be pretty obvious. More tests mean more people with COVID can be identified and isolated, and therefore our infection rate will go down. The sample testing, CDC believes 4 million tests a month are adequate. Look at the briefing, okay? They say that, okay? That should be rejected. That is really poor testing philosophy. Let them go do their sample testing, but put somebody else in charge of mass testing, okay? Now, the reason they really rely on the public health service and that's where Admiral Giroir is. He's the head of the Public Health Service. And the reason they don't do mass testing is they can't possibly do it. They have 6,500 employees, probably half of them are administrators, okay? So you, you, there's no way they could do millions of tests. Absolutely not. In the next video, I'm going to talk about how many people we do need to do mass testing. It's way more, way more than 6,500, okay? That's why it, this should be taken over. You know, let public health service do their thing, but we need a whole new organization. Now, Michigan, in the example I gave, could get its economy back in 15 days, assuming that they started out with 40,000 Abbots. Now, of course, what we got to do is produce 40,000 Abbots before they do that. And the cost would only be $180 million, and they get their economy back. People would get their jobs back. My God, if anybody in Michigan is looking at this tape, Please send it to all your other friends in Michigan, okay, and get the economy back. We got to do the right thing. Now, testing, testing, as you know, no test is 100%. No vaccine is 100%. But repeated testing will drive the number of COVID cases down. And when we drive it down to a low level and we keep it down there, we can get our economy back. And this could be done if you had the test machines in as little as 15 days for the state of Michigan, okay? The CDC is poorly managing the existing 20,000 Abbots, and I mean really poorly utilizing them. They're, poor, they're utilizing 1%, okay? Uh, that is a really, I'm sorry, is a failure of management, so somebody else should be responsible for utilizing the Abbots in a testing mode, okay? And the CDC, their heart is just not in mass testing, so I really think they ought to do their thing, and then we ought to get somebody else to do mass testing. Now, Okay, with the number of Abbots that I'm talking about as an example to do mass testing in the United States, how many people do we need to do the testing? That's the subject of my next video. Thank you uh, for your attention and stay healthy.